Welcome to part three of our eminently demonetizable review of the Brothers War Cards from your pal Sean, aka Day9. We've gotten through white and blue in part one, black and red in part two, and now we're on the guh of Wooberg, green and multicolored and artifact. Let's kick things off with Alloy Animist Green 1-1 one, one until end of next turn. Target non-creature artifact you control becomes a 4-4 artifact creature. I don't like Power Stones. I don't know why. I think it's just the hill I've chosen to die on. So this card is, in a realistic sense, excellent. Like, superb in Limited. Um, you know, if you are stacking up on Power Stones and you're looking for punching in with damage, you don't really care if your Power Stones wind up dying if they don't have any use for you in the later parts of the game, or even the mid parts of the game. The Alloy Animus can turn them into a clock. Big fan of this. Not constructed playable at all. Way too much mana cost. Argothian Opportunist. Two and a green for a 3-2 when it enters battlefield. Oh my god, two Power Stone cards right at the start of the review. This is, I mean, this is rough. This is a real pain in the ass. You know that? I'm devastated. I can't believe it. Look at her. She's she's horrified she might get reviewed soon. Yeah, I'm going to give this... This is probably a great card, but I'm going to give it a zero. Argothian Sprite. One and a green for a 2-2. Two -two. Argothian Sprite can't be blocked by artifact creatures. Oh. Put tons of mana to make some counters on Argothian Sprite. Oh, I quite like this card. Oh, I quite like this card. Because, again, that seven mana, you can pay Power Stone mana on this one. Gosh, I love seeing Power Stone cards. Mmm, they're my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Yeah, this this almost seems like the, the sunbathing root walla of the set. It is, it is literally a power bear. I'm a big fan of this. Great limited common. Insane limited common. Audacity. Me? Never. A green uh, gets plus two, plus zero, and trample. When it's put into the graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. Man. Man. I mean, this is honestly pretty good. You can do some nasty aggro stuff with this. Typo in the last line. How? Where's the typo? Where's the typo? When Audacity is put into a graveyard from the battlefield draw card. You're right. Or maybe it's just being a very assertive line. Hey, you, draw card. Hey, if I'm put into the graveyard from anywhere, draw a card. We don't have time to say a card. Solid limited. But I see an X cost, so I'm aroused. Awaken the Woods, X green green. Create X one one green forest dryad land creature tokens. Mm. Oh. oh my god, why? Oh, their lands. Oh. Oh. Oh my god. Dude, anything with landfall. I don't even know if there is any landfall stuff in standard. Oh, is there stuff that does things to your lands? Oh, I'm going crazy here, man. You can tap them for mana. Um I don't actually know if you can tap them for mana on the turn they're played. I don't know if you can tap them for mana on the turn they're played. Because Summoning Sickness says you can't attack or tap on the turn they're played. And so lands you can normally play immediately or play and then tap immediately. And I believe it is because, like, semantically speaking, 
technically lands can always tap the turn that they are that they enter the battlefield unless they enter tapped literally but things that have summoning sickness can't be tapped so i think i think that these can't generate the mana on the turn um which would be devastating because that would be fun if there was like green forest dryad land creature tokens with a haste and you just like use it to cast like three more awake in the woods Yeah, I think that's right. So, yeah, no, this... What do I think about this card? We're going to make it work. We're going to make it work. I, I mean, I think it's probably terrible. Well, actually, what if we were like a Selesnia ramp? Land list? Nah, you know, like... We awaken the woods and we have whatever that stupid five mana card at Rabble Rousing. So, yeah, we're going to do some stupid shit with this. Because, like, I love green cards with X. Because green has all the ramp cards. It has all the cards that put lands from your deck onto the battlefield. Hell yeah. So then you can X more consistently. Creatures, tend, creatures with ramp abilities tend to be better at, like, doing a three-mana play on turn two. Because you played a one-mana one-one uh, that generates mana. But, like, I, I don't like getting big cards out sooner. I like things that cost X. I want the biggest card ever. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So this is it. This is a five in all formats. This is obviously not that great and limited, but is totally sweet. We're running this. Blanche Wood Armor. Two and a green. Enchanted Creature gets plus one, plus one for each force you control. Oh. Oh, this could be fun. The problem is, this is an enchantment, and enchantments by and large suck unless they have staple to them. When I go to the graveyard, you have to draw! Like, this is fucking terrible. Ben Max is including force tokens? I know. I know. The synergy is easier to see when the cards follow each other consecutively. Wait a minute. I think I'm putting two and two together, but I'm not sure if I just have two twice or four. Like, um... I think I think that this is this this is really dangerous due to the fact that you cast it on a creature, they remove it, and it's dead. But it could also be you put it on a creature with trample, and then you win the game. But it's still fun to see. Blanche Wood Prowler, one in a green for a one one. When Blan oh these this fucking card archetype. When Blanche Wood Prowler enters a battlefield, mill three cards. You may put a land card from among the cards milled this way into your hand, but if you don't, you put that Prowler little counter on there. Now, I read this and thought it was going to be an artifact. But you can put a land. This card's better. This card's better. Being able to play a 1-1 one, one for 2 that then lets you put a land from the grave into the hand is actually pretty good. <coughs> it's like a vine wall. Floriferous vine wall. Seems good. Great. Burrowing razor maw. Two and a green for a 4-2. When it dies, mill four cards. Oh, I see. So we're just yoking up the grave. All right. Looks like we are just filling the grave. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of artifacts with unearthed. Mm, I think I actually don't know how good milling is. Generally, in this set, so who knows? Who knows? Bushwhack. Choose one, search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. Tar creature you control fights tar creature you don't control. Wow. Fight effects needed a little bit of leveling up, huh? Bushwhack is great. Because I like the idea that you are either cutting the bush down and getting the land, or there's a monster in there. So this card actually seems pretty solid. It's not ramp, but it's consistency, and sometimes you fight. Stellar Joe says it's either bush or whack. <laughs> ah, there's the joke. Hell yeah. I don't think this really fits in Constructed. I'd rather put the lands onto the battlefield than into the hand. Sitanur Stalwart. One green for a 1-1. One, one. 
Tap an untapped artifact or creature you control. Add one mana of any color. Is mono green elves standard playable with this now? Because you'll recall that there was the one two for one where it was tap another creature, add a mana of any color. And it was just good, the Jasper Sentinel. Yeah, I mean, th th this card just looks incredibly unassuming, but is pretty good in standard. Like, Jasper Sentinel made ridiculous, insane things happen. So this kind of delays the one-mana ramping capabilities a bit, but so it's really good with flooding uh, out a whole bunch of little cheap creatures. So I'm, I'm really keen on this for standard. It doesn't look like it would be valuable and constructed. Epic Confrontation. The movie event of the summer. What critics are calling an epic confrontation of good and evil. One in a green. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus two until end of turn. It fights target creature you don't control. It's sorcery speed, which really doesn't feel very epic. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Ah, uh, what am I talking about? Sorry, someone someone pinged me. I was like, is it an emergency? And it was just a feedback channel thing. Okay. So this, this, is, this is just, the, you know, it's like whatever. This is like a whatever card. You'll probably pick up some of these and they'll be fine. We want instant speeds, though. Fade to history. Each player who controls an artifact or enchantment creates a 2-2 two, two green bear. Then destroy all artifacts and enchantments. What? I mean... So, if I understand how this works, I'm going to fill my side of the board with treasures or power stones or something like that. And at some point, in the Magic the Gathering HQ, someone was like, I just have this idea. I can't quite figure out how to make it work. But God, do I want all my treasures to just become bears. God, can we just get Power Stones to become bears? And someone was like, Power Bears? And it's like, no, just bears. How do we make it work? Because really, this could have been something about, like, you know... Bearful transmogrification. <laughs> like <laughs> um poly bear morph or some such thing, right? But said fade from history. Wait a minute. Wait, it's only one bear? Each player who controls an artifact or enchantment creates a two two green bear creature token. Let me tell you, that guy at Wizards Headquarters is pissed. <laughs> Reyes says, verification. Yeah, please bear, bear with me as I read through this card. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess that the reason that Fade from History is good is it turns some jerk that has, like, I don't know, maybe, like, Teachings of Kirin and Fable of the Mirror Breaker and Cruelty of Gix out. It just turns all of those into a bear. So if, if I am up against, for instance, that obnoxious, douchey, you know, Slesnia, oh, for everything's an enchantment, this can blow up their whole board and leave them with a bear that will then kill me on the following turn. So this card's hilarious because it makes one bear. All right, I'll give it a five. That seems good. Falaji Excavation. Look at this uranium that I'm holding in my hands. All right, three, green, green. Create three tapped power. Fauna Shaman. One and a green for a two, two. Discard a creature card. Search your library for a creature card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Oh. I 
I'm really thinking standard elves is going to be something good. Because this is an elf. We can obviously discard like a, a weak ramper elf to get like the elf lord. Or if we just want to have like a one of of a crater of behemoth type thing, we can found a shaman it. This, this seems also pretty darn good and limited because this is not a super expensive transformation, right? Spend a turn in a mana getting a bad card out and getting a good card in. That's that's pretty pretty rad. But Final Shaman doesn't really do that much else. So I, I'd give it like an elf out of five in Constructed. If elves are good, uh, Fauna Shaman is good. Uh, uh, you know, something like that. Fog of War. Oh, yeah. RTS references. Oh, yeah. I like this. You gain one life for each creature on the battlefield. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn by creatures with power three or less. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh let me tell you. Let me tell you. People are going to be pissed at me. Oh my god, we're going to be running this. So, okay, so fog effects. Fog effects say, don't take any damage this turn. So there were really obnoxious decks that were trying to go infinite. And the way they would work is they would just put in their combo together and then fog, 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 delay, 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 and then bam, I take infinite turns in a row. So uh, those lists were called turbo fog lists. And this is this is like... I'll be honest, Standard is my favorite format. I know it's not as popular as, like, you know, Commander, Modern, or that sort of stuff, but I like Standard because Standard feels like you're trying to solve a format as opposed to trying to optimize playing this deck in a format. And I find that's really satisfying. To kind of, like, meander at a much larger range. And Fog of War is, like, a very standard power level kind of card that I feel like it's enabling some cool decks in my brain. So this probably would give it a zero in standard. <laughs> probably give this a fucking zero in standard. Uh, in limited, I'd probably give this a zero in limited as well. Unless you can cobble together some real nonsense. Gaia's Corsa. Four and a green for a four five. Pretty good. When Gaia's course for attacks, there are three or more creature cards in your graveyard. Draw a card. S tier. Love this. Give this one a big five, staying alive and limited. Maybe a four. Maybe I'd give this a four out of five. I think this is a great card. Four or five is a really good stabilizing stat line. When you start swinging, gives you more value. Does have the gap, which is how do you protect it when it swings so you don't just like, ow, Jesus. Lose it to a double block. Or something like this. Um, and then also, if you're swinging, you need to be protected on the backside. But I still think the upside of this is good enough. I think the upside of this is good enough. So I, I rate it quite highly. Gaia's Gift. One and a green. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. It gains reach, trample, hexproof, and indestructible until end of turn. Wow. All right. Yep. Yep. Come on in. I'm tired. Hey. Hey, come here. Okay. Watch out. You're on. You're on the mixer. Yeah. This. This is still. It's actually still not as good as take up the shield. Because take up the shield gives life link. I'm. I'm gonna kiss you. It's been so nice having Despy here today. I'm really happy. Gaia's Gift. All right. Oh, yo, dude. Yo, it's the only fair one ever printed. Holy shit. Oh, wait, I, I need to go back to this. Th this, I actually think that we probably will not see this in Constructed because there are one mana green cards that do this. So a two mana green card is actually just way, way too overcosted. Giant growth. 
so good. This tree is huge and it's squishing what I assume is an incredibly large walking mech machine, which is very different from... Um, it, it looks like this, this tree got a new stuffed animal for Christmas and fucking hates it. That's what it looks like. It's like, mother thought I would love this. <laughs> it's like so mad. So uh, when the very first set of Magic the Gathering was printed, each color had a one mana card that had three in it. So Giant Growth was the only fair one, which is a green target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. And when I say fair, I mean fair and standard. There is fair and modern. That card is called um, uh, Lightning Bolt. That's one red, deal three damage to any target. Now the black one, Dark Ritual, was pay one black mana to gain three black mana. And that's kind of situational. Uh, it can't do the most unfair stuff because it's really trading a, a card for temporary mana once. It's really nice. The white one is pay white. You gain three life. Shit's bad. Uh, shit's real bad. Uh, Lightning Bolt is good in, in like, mo it's like modern power level. Uh, but the most powerful one was blue, which was one blue... Draw three cards! <laughs> good old Ancestral Recall. And that is good in Vintage. It's insane, man. So it's, it's good to see this one back. I'll run you in some limited stuff. Still not as good as Guy's Intervention, but whatever. Gnarl Root Paul Bearer. Oh, if you love the letter R, you're going to love the Gnarl Root Paul Bearer. Four and a pair of greens for a 5-5 five, five Trampler. When it enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus X, plus X, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Man, there's a lot of weird mill graveyard synergy type stuff. It's really interesting. So let me just pause for a moment. Holden says, no idea how they ever thought that was balanced back then. Draw was so rare. Well, so the way that Magic the Gathering was envisioned was kind of an emphasis on the mystery of collection alongside the, you know, the joy of playing the game. So the idea was, initially, you're going to buy a couple packs, I'm going to buy a couple packs, and we're going to have completely different, weird, spiky decks. When we play against each other, the game works. That's what's cool about it. You and I can have completely different decks. When we sit down to play, the game works. And, I mean, this was in 1993 this game came out. So, I mean, it wasn't even that the internet was not that popular. It's like there really was no notion of what the internet could become. It was completely absent. I mean, hell, multiplayer gaming wasn't even really a thing outside of, like, couch co-op type things. And so, when those cards were printed... There was not even a testing environment for them to be able to figure out what would happen if someone had four copies of an Ancestral Recall or if they built a deck. I think that there was... Um, gosh, I, I don't even know if a lot of the rules were fully formalized around deck sizes. And all those kinds of things. Like, because we have you know, a 40 card limited deck and a 60 card constructed deck. I mean, and there's another thing that is crazy um, to think about, which is that Magic the Gathering was the first collectible card game, pre internet and the first. And so no one knew, no one knew what the fuck card advantage was. They just made cards that did shit. And I feel like this is like a, a useful lesson because it's so easy to, like, I am a hardcore gamer, like, like super, 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 super hardcore. And by that, I mean, like, in terms of the hours of the day I spend playing games, it's like way, way top 0.01 percentile. Like, I fucking play a lot of games. A lot of my friends are hardcore gamers. A lot of my colleagues are hardcore gamers. A lot of the people that I incidentally interact with. Hey. Would you?
I love you. She's pretty mad about that. Yeah, so, um... What was I talking about before I got distracted by my cat? She shoved her head into my coffee cup, and it sounded a little stuck, so I had to, like, pull her head out of the coffee cup. Um, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, because I feel like all the people I meet and interact with and talk to are hardcore gamers. And a common pattern in gamer social media, gamer groups, gamer discords, even you gamers and me gamers, is to think so much about the high-level experience of the game that the first five to 10 hours start to kind of become a little invisible, right? Because like, even if you sat there and were imagining your own card game, you're playing through simple interactions with these rules in your head, you're getting past 10 hours of gameplay in the first week you're thinking about it, right? Onto the higher level problems around balance and longevity and all this sort of good shit. Um, but the, that first five to 10 hours is essential. And in the first five to 10 hours, players don't have a clue about the high level strategy. They don't know how to value things. They don't have a sense of um, what's necessarily good or bad or correct or incorrect. What they want to feel is fun and impact. And if you play one card and you draw three cards, going from one card to three cards is very clear what the impact was. I spent a mana and a card, and now I have three cards. A card that is something like one mana, scry, scry one, and then draw one. That is opt, and it is really fucking unclear to a brand new player who sits down what this is doing. Because, like, so I have one card, and I play it, and I just look and go, I don't want that, and then I just get this card? Okay. Okay. Like, it's clear something happened, but not why it's good. And I think that the brilliance of really early magic was that the stuff was just so blunt and spiky and big. You know, it's a craw worm. It's like a 6-4. Just does a lot of damage. Whoa. Anyways. Naru Paul Bear seems very good. It's a 5-5 trampler for 6. And it's going to make one thing big for a swing and defend this. This is great. Yeah, it seems good and limited. It seems terrible elsewhere. Gwena Isagaya. Two and a green for a 2-3. Add two mana in any combination of colors. Ooh. Spend this mana only to cast creature spells or activate abilities of a creature or creature card. Fuck yeah. And she's an elf. Oh. Whenever you cast a creature spell with power five or greater, put a plus one, plus one counter on Gwena Isagaya and untap it. What's it? I assume it's Gwenna. Just stay here and stop dunking your head in my coffee. What are you doing? Here. Here's here. Can I oh you want scritches? Okay, we're doing scritches. So this is insane. So you can do some sort of weird elf ramp build up thing. And then start smashing out big stuff. Yeah, I, I really think Standard Elves is going to be something. Standard Elves is going to be something. Maybe Standard Elves <laughs> into Titan of Industry. Wow, this is actually pretty sick. Yeah. Now, in um, Limited, I actually think that most of the time, I would say that this card's bad. Look, do you, if you want to play with this, here, it's going to be on the ground. There you go. Here's the coffee. Come here. Nothing? I put it on the ground for you. What are you doing? Come here. Get out of the way. You're on... The... Come here. Come here. You need it. like... Come here. Come over here. Get... Come here. Oh, my God. My children. Yeah, what are you... What are you doing? You need to get it together. Oh my god. Oh god damn it. <laughs> Alright, this card's good. Bunch of fives. Alright. Hoarding Recluse. Three and a green for a 2-3 reach death toucher. When 
Hoarding Recluse dies, put up to one other target card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. Clearly limited stuff for everyone who's milling and they don't want people to die due to the fact they overmilled. So you have ways to dunk things back from your graveyard onto the bottom of the library for big impact. Yes. I said yes. Obstinate Bayloth. Two in a pair. Hey, 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 what are you doing? Are you okay, Sheriff? Despy has lost her damn mind. Despy just went and attacked Sheriff. I can't believe it. Obstinate Bayloth. When it enters the battlefield, you gain four life. If a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard Obstinate Bayloth, put it onto the battlefield instead of putting it into your graveyard. This is actually pretty good. There's the, was it, the Loxodon Smasher or Loxodon Smiter, whatever it was that was kind of like this. I think Obstinate Bayloth is also a sort of like good middle of the road defensive card for a ramp list, which is all I'm thinking about. Because on turn three, you'll often play the card that lets you ramp. So on turn four, you're typically behind. So being able to play an Obstinate Bayloth at that point in time is really nice. Um, and then obviously the anti. Hmm. The anti-discard tech is very, very fringe. I don't know when this would ever activate in standard, but this this is interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is this is just a solid little card. Doesn't do anything that great. It's like a baby Palaka. Yeah, it's a little baby Palaka, so we're going to give it a 7 out of 7. Perimeter Patrol, 2 and a green for a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever an artifact enters a battlefield under your control, Perimeter Patrol gets plus 1, plus 0 oh until end of turn. Okay, this is a 3-3 three, three for 3. If you have been observing standard, or excuse me, limited in the last few sets, a 3-3 three, three for 3 is pretty uncommon. I should be more specific. It's rather infrequent. <laughs> you just don't see it really that much. Um, so these little 3-3s three, for 3, I've been pretty impressed with. Like the little bog badgers, been pretty impressed with. Perimeter patrol, pretty... Pretty reasonable assertion that it could be better than you think. Oh, and it's a soldier. Has soldier, has power stone synergy. I think this is a, a much more solid card than at first glance. Serenth Steelseeker. One green for a 1-2. Whenever an artifact enters a battlefield under your control, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may reveal it and put it into your hand. If you don't, put the card into your hand. You can put it into your graveyard. So... Power Stone, Synergy to get more land. Boring. I mean, there's probably a good green Power Stone list. We all know it. We're all thinking it. I'll be the one to say it. If this th this is horrific and um, constructed, but, you know, it's, it's okay. Explore, but worse, yeah. But it's repeated explore. Yeah, yeah. Shoot down. Exile target artifact enchantment or creature with flying. Whoa, they're doing a lot more with exile lately. That's really interesting. Destroy is like the cheaper but recurrable. Exile is the more pricey but permanent. And exile used to be just a really rare thing. So sorcery speed, which actually really hurts. Ugh. But, you know, 23rd card and constructed. Taunosis tinkering. Three and a green. Put two plus one plus one counters. Target artifact, creature, or land you control. Untap that permanent. If it isn't a creature, it becomes a zero zero creature in addition to its other types. This is a weird card. Does this work with vehicles? Well, I think it will become a zero zero vehicle. And will lose its its stat line. Yeah, I think I think you're right, Stellar Joe. I think this is basically a four mana combat trick. It's it's just insanely slow. 
insanely, insanely, insanely slow. Yeah, it makes a 2-2 power stone. Ooh, but I think more often than not, it's going to be just a thing that buffs your flyer. A thing that buffs some two for ones. It's just a really ch fucking expensive combat trick, I will say. So it even seems like limited trek. Oh, teething wormlet. Oh, you're so cute. One green for a one one. Teething wormlet has death touch as long as you control three or more artifacts. Why? Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. This is the first time this ability is resolved this turn. Put a plus one plus one counter on teething wormlet. Okay, so it's a one one that just is going to grow and gain life and grow and gain life and grow and gain life. I have zero idea how to evaluate this card. None. I have no idea how to evaluate it. It seems like the most middling rare that you will ever get in your drafts. Yeah, he's snacking on artifacts, snacking away, gaining life, getting big, snacking, snacking. Another dragon with a bell? Why not? Glad it's not another dragon with a ball. Yeah, I mean, it seems, 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 uh, it's no predator ooze, that's for sure. Uh-oh, Titania's Command, four and a pair of greens. I can't wait to be disappointed. Exile, target player's graveyard. You gain one life for each card exiled this way. That's pretty good. Search your library for up to two land cards, put them on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. That's not that great. Well, it's two lands. Create two green bear creature tokens. Put two plus and plus counters on each creature you control. I mean, this is still not that good, but I think it's the only good one that I can see. You know... With our ramp list, we could just make a whole bunch of X, X one one forests, <laughs> and then we could Titania's command them. Still seems weak. Six mana, two four fours seems okay. Does it? There's like the five mana. Make two four fives. Gosh, I am gonna run this garbage, aren't I? I'm gonna run this. This seems great and limited. You can make, the board can stall and you play Titania's Command and you're getting something like 12 bonus power on the board. That seems great. So I think this is a solid zero or one in constructed and a three in limited for sure. Tomakal Honor Guard, one in a green for three one with Ward two. Hmm. All right. Can't shoot me with spells. But I'm really easy to kill. Limited filler. Wasteful Harvest. Two and a green. Mill five cards. You may put a permanent card from among the cards milled this way into your hand. I don't even think this is limited drac, right? This is just this is just zero. This is horrible. This is horrific. Oh, I love this. Look at this. They're harvesting. You see all these guys like, what are you doing? What is going on? Oh my god. That's some really sweet art. Boulder Branch Golem, seven mana, six, five. When Boulder Branch Golem enters the battlefield, you gain life equal to its power. <gasps> Shitty Palaka Worm. And you can prototype this puppy out for three. Mm. These are like mono green life gain creatures. <laughs> All right. I mean, seems like a non non constructed prototyper. Seems seems all right. I mean, again, I think that like the set has a lot of big beaters in there. So the fact that these ones are healing while your low drops are doing nothing yeah, seems pretty good. Green seems the most power stone compliant. Oh my gosh, cradle clear cutter. When played for six is a three six that can tap to generate three mana or a prototype. It is weird. Weird, 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 weird. All weird. Just weird. I mean, it's fun. It's weird.
cradle, clear cutter. The art is beautiful. Oh, the art in the set is A+, plus, as always. Haywire Might. One for a 1-1. One, one. When Haywire Might dies, you gain two life. Sacrifice Haywire Might. Exile target non-creature artifact or non-creature enchantment. Huh. This card seems to do too much stuff for it not to be good in the constructed list somewhere. Because, like, it's a 1-1 one, one for one that can, like, block and gain a life. But if your opponent is, like, for, against, for, for example, against Rakdos Sacrifice, you can block and then sack pop one of their really good artifacts. Obviously, it's sideboardy. I don't even know if it's that good in standard, but this is this is really interesting. This is a really interesting one, and I'm kind of having the same reaction in limited. There's so many artifacts, with prototype, and all this stuff. I actually think this is kind of a high value card to put in limited. This might even be like a four or a five in limited, because imagine you play a one one for one, you sack it for green, and you kill. You don't just kill, you exile their huge artifact creature. Oh yeah, you get a power stone. Mm. Oh, it's a non-creature artifact. Right. All right, zero. Iron Craw Crusher. Seven mana, four, six. When it attacks, target attacking creature gets plus X plus O. Okay, cool. So it's sort of like the worm you climb inside of for a bat hole. Or it's a two, five. All right, it's just a very medium, solid, statted card. And there you go. Mask of the Jade Crafter. A two mana, sack Mask of the Jade Crafter. Create an XX colorless golem artifact creature token. Activate only as a sorcery. Oh, so this is interesting. Like, I could... I could be a ramp green list. Play the Mask of the Jade Crafter. Crack this to make, like, a 5-5 five, five golem unearth it and sack it again to make a 5-5 five, five golem. Interesting mana sink. You basically get two golems for the price of one. Actually, just for a lot of price. Because this is two mana and then X and then unearth for three and then X. It's like Jade Golems, but in the reverse one. Ah, oh, yeah, it's very good. Very, very good. I wonder if Jade Golems have a sort of mythos and lore that I'm unfamiliar with because I've seen this sort of pattern in more games than just Hearthstone and Magic. It's interesting. All right. Yeah, I mean, this is a fine, you know, if you are a green player who's making a bunch of power stones in limited, Mask of the Jade Crafter lets you make two big fucking golems. Mm-hmm. Perennial Behemoth. Let me play lands from your graveyard. What? What? A five mana, two seven. This is doing something somewhere in one of my decks. Perennial Behemoth is doing something somewhere. Getting lands from the graveyard, there's a lot of like sack the land to do a thing and then you can replay it again. Rambunctious, I'm curious specifically about Jade. Jade Golems. Um, you can unearth for two. Yeah, I mean, this... this is obviously strong and limited because we've seen so many green cards that mill. A 2-7 stat line is like impossible to break through. This is incredible. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, so... Shmagegi says, Perennial Behemoth is a card I asked them to design for Commander. And they said, Shmagegi, we're not designing cards just for your Commander deck. The only person who gets cards made for their Commander deck is Trick. That makes sense. Trick Jarrett designs only cards that go to his Commander deck and then permits the rest of the design team to flesh out after that. That does sound like Trick. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Perennial Behemoth. 
Um, yeah, I just think this card's probably excellent. It's just it needs to fit in the right spot. It needs to fit in the right spot. I, I, I will run this garbage and construct it. I really want more cards that say you may play more than one land a turn because filling your graveyard is easier than drawing cards. And then you perennial behemoth and slap some lands out from there. Root Wire Amalgam, a 5-mana five 5-5. Five, five. You can pay 5 to sack, create an XX Colorless Golem Artifact Creature Token, where X is 3 times Root Wire Amalgam's power. It gains haste until end of turn. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Oh my god, we found our fling target. Yeah, because if you have six mana and you giant growth this to make an 8-5, excuse me, an 8-8, eight, eight, and then you sacrifice it for five, and then it comes out as a 24-24. Mmm. 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 Yeah, I think Rewire Amalgam is good. Wow. I assume that this is the 15-15 and this is the 5-5. Five, five. Oh, yeah, this is good shit. I mean, this is already an absolutely enormous card as a 5-5 five, five for 5. But then making it a 15-15. And it gains haste, too. Yeah, I love this card. It gets 5s all around. It's It gets a 5 out of 5. Rust Goliath, the 10 mana 10 10 with Reach and Trample. Yeah, fuck yeah, Rust Goliath is great. Get in my green decks. Yeah, dude, green is going to be the most fun limited uh, list to make. Green is going to be so fun, dude. We're going to run the biggest constructs. There's going to be nothing but giant Mishra warships. Oh my god, this is this is the Sean set, Stellar Joe. This truly is. This is so sick. Simeon Simulacrum. It's a three mana two one. When it enters battlefield, put two plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. So this is like so this is like a three mana four three. They can also be really good for buffing my turn two play, huh? Yeah, I think I think this is this is this is a good constructed card. There's already attempts to try to make some mono green stompy type things. Good. Simeon Simulacrum would be a nice one to play. Stack it on the previous turn creature, or you just have a four three for three. Ah, it might be a little weak for that actually. It might be a little weak, but this this is just an all round excellent card and limited. We we like this because it's just counters popping out of everywhere. <laughs> Oh my god, we get to mono colors. Here we go. All right, we got about another 50 cards to go. Another 50 cards to go. Arbalest Engineers. One red green for a 2 2 and it enters the battlefield. It deals one damage to any target. Or puts a plus and plus and counter on target creature against trample and haste until end of turn. So this is a 3 3 trampler with haste. Or create a tapped power stone token. Ugh. Three three trample hasters like Gruel Spellbreaker, a little weaker than that, but I could see it working. Obviously, excellent and limited given what it's doing, given the spread. Yeah, dude. Yeah, they're the, they're just like loading in Christmas ornaments to gaddle out of this like <laughs> weird Christmas machine. That's so good. Battery Bear, I revealed this card. Creatures you control have tap. Add blah. This mana can't be spent to cast a non-artifact spell. Whenever you cast an artifact spell with mana value 6 or greater, draw a card. Have you ever seen a better battery bearer? Have you ever seen a card that is better tuned for ramping? This is amazing. Like, imagine battery bearer coming down. You got some power stones, you got some creatures. You just play that 10 mana dude on turn 5. Mmm, and you get to draw a card out of it. Yes! And a 3-4 four for 4, great stat line. Happy to see that. 5 out of 5. Love it. Not unconstructed. 
Death Bloom Ritualist. Three black green. Add X man of any one color, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Oh, I guess that this is actually okay. Because there's so many, like, 7, 8, 9, 10 cost things. Yeah, ramping to 10 is going to be relevant. 3, 5 for 5? Eh, I'd probably give it a 3 out of 5 at best. 3, 5. 5 is a lot of toughness. Eh. Evangel of Synthesis. All right, blue-black for a 2-3. When Evangel of Synthesis enters the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card. As long as you've drawn two or more cards this turn, Evangel of Synthesis gets plus one, plus seven, has Menace. Beautiful art, terrible card. I mean, it's a 2-3 for two. It's probably going to be able to get buffable to 3-3. Three, three. Eh, I mean, it's all right. It's just, it's it's like one of those two drops that you're happy to have. So that way when you're doing some cycling stuff, some sacrificing stuff, this is one of the things that's benefiting. But, you know, I think it's fine. Phalagi Vanguard. Two red, white. Two, three, first striker. Whenever Phalagi Vanguard or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, target creature gets plus two, plus zero oh until end of turn. Oh. So this is good at giving one of my buddies plus two plus O, oh, and then I play another buddy next turn, and the Flagy Vanguard is a 4-3 for a striker. This seems like a solid attacker. There's a lot of, like, 4-4 four, four Power Stone stuff that can happen. There's not a lot of things that are X5. Um, obviously works really well with, if you remember, five hours ago when we were looking at the white cards, you know, a lot of 1-1 one, one soldiers getting generated. And something to note is that it's when a creature enters the battlefield, not when you cast a creature. So if you have something that makes like two 1-1 one, one creatures, it's plus two, plus oh, plus two, plus oh. So, yeah, I think Falaji Vanguard is definitely going to be solid in limited list. Not good enough in constructed, I don't think. I think we'd rather just like play something that just flat gives the buff and then we send him in. A jar. Loyal. Loyal warrior jar. All right. Ooh, a red, green, three, three. Sack a jar. Legendary creatures you control. Get plus one, plus oh, and gain indestructible until end of turn. Could be good in Gruel Legends. Like, three, three for two is pretty sick. Pretty sick. Um, Could be good. But it seems mostly like a... Three, three, four, two, primarily. But again, if you can curve, like, nothing on turn one, Hajar into Legend, into, like, Halana and Elena, you know, there's a lot of really good Gruul Legends that you can curve into. And then you can just keep on swinging. Yeah. Eh. Eh. <laughs> Very meh. Harbin. Vanguard Aviator. Four white blue for a 3 2 flyer. Whoa, 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 wait. It's a 3 2 flyer for two? Damn. Whenever you attack with five or more soldiers, creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain flying until end of turn. Oh, Esper Legends just got a killer addition. Fuck. Get out of here, Denik. You dork. Look at this Harbin. Holy shit. Wow. Harbin is... Harbin is... Wow, he's pretty big. 3-2 for 2? Mmm. Gross. Yeah. Hero of the Dunes. 3 and a white and a black for a 3-2. Well, bad stat lines. Here are the Dunes, enters the art of, uh, battlefield. Return target artifact or creature card with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Creatures you control with mana value 3 or less get plus 1, plus 0. Oh. What? Okay. Okay, the problem is that it is a 3-2.
I think this is this is a really good limited card. I think it's like a four. Because you have a, a, like a variety of small 1-1 one, one soldier creature tokens. You play Hero of the Dunes. Immediately you have a terrifying swing. And you've just gotten... You have a terrifying swing. You've just gotten back another three uh, mana thing. And you also have the benefit of two creatures on the board as a result of Hero of the Dunes instead of one. So this, this actually seems pretty good. I mean, it's a lot of diffuse value. But I think it's a huge amount of value regardless. I'd rate this very highly. Junkyard Genius. Arakdos. One black red... When Junker Genius enters battlefield, create a tap power stone. Pay three, sack another creature artifact until end of turn. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus oh, and gain menace and haste. Menace and haste? Jesus. I mean, that's this is a five. That is really good. Whoa. Holy shit. Junkyard Genius does it all. That's really good. It's not even a legend. Wow, that's great. In limited. Because you can just... The board starts to stall. Okay, you play Junkyard Genius, and you just immediately sack a Power Stone and swing on in. You can even pay for the Power Stone's mana with itself. And Menace means it can only be blocked by two or more creatures. So each of your creature, like if you have five creatures and they have five creatures and you swing, they can only block two of your creatures. Wow. Yeah, that's great. Legions to ashes. All right, one black, white, exile target, non -line permanent, and opponent controls, and all tokens that player controls with the same name as that permanent. It's all tokens, so it's not like a deputy of detention or anything. Here's what I'm reading. Three mana, exile, target, non-land, permanent. Period. Full stop. It's not instant speed, which does stink, but it is exile, target, non-land, permanent. And then every once in a while, it's exile, target, non-land, permanent, and all your fucking power stones. Or if you have a swarm of 1-1s, one exile one, and then get all of them. It's three, but it is sorcery speed. So, I mean, this is, this, is, this is pretty damn solid. I think that overall, I would say it's probably going to be a four or five, because it's exile, target, non-land, permanent. That's a huge amount of things it hits, and it exiles? Fuck. That's really good. And 5% of the time it exiles a bunch of tokens as well, but like still, exile. That's why I like Legions to Ashes. Mishra, Tamer of Makfawa. All right, three red, black permanents you control have Ward Sack of Permanent. Oh, yes. All right, permanents you control have ward sec permanent. Each artifact card in your graveyard has unearth three. What? What the fuck? Each artifact in your graveyard has unearth for three. So if I do like a black red reanimator list, the way it works is I put 10 mana, ultra pricey, mega artifacts in my graveyard. And then I play Mishra. Mishra's hard to remove because to kill it, you have to sack a permanent. And then if it survives, then we just start swinging in for with 10 tens from the grave. Yo, this is a, this is, this is, this is a, this is a, this is a five. This is a wiggly fingered five. Holy shit. Wow. Mishra, Tamer of Makfawa. So glad this guy never read a book. Look at this killer. Look at this stone coat killer. He's screaming about how he doesn't need to read books. I mean, this is unbelievable. Oh, it feels so good to read this out loud. 
All right, well, great. We love that one. That's one that I mean, I don't even know how you beat this one in limited. That's just disgusting. Queen Kayla Ben Krug. One, a white, and a red. All right, four. Discard all the cards in your hand, then draw that many cards. You choose an artifact or creature card with mana value one. You discard it this way. Then do the same for artifact creature cards with mana values twos and threes. Return those cards to the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery. What? So, I can discard my whole hand, and then I get to play a 1 mana and a 2 mana and a 3 mana for free. Somebody get Traxos. So, I mean that basically it's kind of like you're paying four for a shot to return six mana to the battlefield. I think this is terrible. I think this is a horrific card. It might be okay in, like, limited? Because you're getting a little bit of value, but I think it's I think it's not even that good in limited. I think Queen Kayla Ben Krug is a great way to uh, just mill yourself to death. It's terrible. I think it's... I think it is so bad. All right, Mardu Sack Jank. Yeah, like here's here's how I think this is good. If there's like a one mana card that says, as an additional casting cost, do some insane bullshit, and then you would get to avoid the insane bullshit because it's just mana value one, and you funk it onto the battlefield. So yeah, you know, it seems terrible. I'm gonna, th this. This is the hill I will die on. The stuff's terrible. Noxious Live joins and screams bag of a holding. I don't want to un-VIP you because you're very important. But I will do it if you say bag of holding to me one more time. Bag of holding, more like bad of holding. Or more like bad of at gaming. Huh? SP says... Knox is bag of 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 bag of you want to say it so fucking bad. Hold on, I gotta get off this thing so that way I can save Knox. I have to maintain hag of bolding. Damn it, he found the way in. All right, Sahili filigree master. Oh. Do you like my bow? Two and a, a red and a blue for three. Plus to scry, you may tap an untapped artifact you control. If you do draw a card. Okay. Minus two, create some thopters. They gain haste until end of turn. Okay. And you get a little emblem. Artifact creatures you control get plus one, plus one. And artifact spells you cast cost one less to cast. Hey. I mean, that's pretty good and annoying. That emblem is going to pop off a ton, man. Sahili. Into Sahili. Into Sahili. Oh, shit. I love this Planeswalker. Five as fuck. Really good. Terrific. Such a good card. Yeah, so like you basically on on play minus to it to bonk the face. You probably need to make sure that you have a lot of extra protection. Because technically this card protects itself, but like not really. Because like a pair of 1-1s one is like eh. And then you really want to keep them alive to make the plus one have value at all. So um, yeah, maybe you minus two 
chump with one, have the other one get tapped to let you draw the next turn, which is great. I mean, it just seems solid. It just seems really, 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 really solid. Great. Serenth Great Worm. Oh, the gruel colors. Four red green for a 7 6 trampler. Whenever a land enters the battlefield, create a tap power stone token. What? Oh my god, this is so dumb and awesome. Look how huge this clown is. A six mana seven six with trample. Whoa. It is land token. All right, so if I have Serenth Great Worm and then I play my Dryad spell, I get like 40 Power Stones that hopefully my opponent blows up. Oh my god, it's whenever a land enters the battlefield. Not whenever a land enters the battlefield on my side. Man, enemy lands powering me up. Serenth Great Worm seems kind of silly, but you know, what can you do? All right, yeah, seems fine. I mean, this... Literally ignoring this Power Stone line, a 6 mana 7-6 seven, is ridiculously good. No wonder it's a mythic. Yeah, 5 and limited, not going to show up in Constructed. Skyfish Spider. 2 black green for a 3-3 three, three Reacher. When Skyfish Spider enters battlefield, you may sack another creature. When you do, destroy target non-land permanent. Whoa! When Skyfish Spider dies, you may gain one life for each creature card in your graveyard. If you do, you exile it from your graveyard? Whoa! What? Huh. Yeah, it's kind of like a bigger Ravenous Chupacabra. Ravenous Chupacabra was a 4-mana 2-2 two -two that when it enters the battlefield, it destroyed target creature. But this is sack a creature and destroy a non-land permanent. That's really good. So you'd have to set yourself up to be able to have a whole bunch of little babies on the battlefield to sack, you know. Shambling Ghast style or like 1-1 one, one artifact creature style. Yeah, this is, this is a really interesting card. Yeah, hits Planeswalkers. Yeah, I think Skyfish Spider is just... Constructed playable. Absolutely. You have to do some work to make it work, but I mean, there's a lot of like creatures that have on death, do blah, blah, blah. You know, like that little rat, that little stupid rat that's a 1-1 one, one rat, and when it dies, it gives minus one, minus one for something. Yeah, you can like minus one, minus one, and nuke a thing? Hell yeah. Tano's the toy maker. Three, green, blue, three, five. Whenever you cast a beast or bird, you may copy it, except the copy is an artifact in addition to its other types. This guy looks gross. Ew. Ugh. Ace Gun says, why did they not use the exploit keyword? Yet yeah, something that's really important to note about cognitive complexity and keywording. Keywords are in existence for two reasons. One, common ideas can be encapsulated more succinctly with a keyword. So, for instance, flying. Flying is a keyword. Once you understand it once, you now understand all flying keywords and their functionality. It's communication clarity. Two, um, you can have mechanics be named that then can trigger other things. So, for instance... Every time a, a, a creature exploits, gain one life. And so when it comes to a mechanic that looks really similar to another mechanic or is identical, we might ask the question, let's imagine... So, so first of all, just a quick technicality. A creature can use exploit on itself and this only hits other creatures. So um, it's technically isn't exploit, but let's just assume that it that this said when Skyfish Spider enters battlefield, you may sacrifice any creature when you do destroy target non-land permanent. And it, in that case, it actually is pretty pretty much exploit, unless I'm missing something. Why might they not do it? Well, think about our two reasons why they exist. One, for communication clarity. Once I understand it once, I can understand everything. It's a shortcut for me to understand. And two, it allows for keyword triggering and interaction, things like this. 
if Skyfish Spider had exploit, then we have a problem. Because are there any other exploit cards in this entire set? No. So we actually haven't reduced the cognitive complexity of, ooh, let me learn this one keyword. Okay, cool, that allows me to streamline the other ones. Instead, we've increased it. Because now I see a keyword, then I feel like I have to memorize and understand the keyword as it applies to other things when it doesn't, not in this set. And two, we might unintentionally have created certain ways of it interacting with other things that we as the designers don't want to. So like surveil is a really good example. There are often cards that say, do a thing, look at the top card of your deck, leave it there or put it into the graveyard. That technically is surveilling. That's the mechanic for that. But then there's things that say, whenever you surveil, return this enchantment to your hand. We might unintentionally cause this new card where there's a one of surveilling keyword to have an effect on this thing that was printed two years ago. And so often you will see when there is a one-off circumstance, like this is the only thing that might actually be doing exploiting. So in that case, what we're going to do is not use the keyword to keep the complexity low and to um, make sure we avoid unintentional things. Now, the thing is that a bunch of you are talking about surveil as like, surveil's an evergreen now. Orthogonal to my point. My point again is, it just happened to be the one that I used as an example. It happened to be one that I that I use as an example, but again, that, that's missing the point of what I'm saying because I'm not making a comment about surveil specifically. I am making a comment about why some things that seem keywordable are often not keyword dead. So whatever the status of surveil is, is irrelevant to that point. And they may have changed surveil to be like evergreen or, deci or evergreen or deciduous or whatever the term is. I see there's some discussion about that in there. But either way, that's, that's the complete answer for that. Because I remember there was someone who was like asking, why don't they keyword everything in magic? There's actually a balance that you have to strike where if you excessively keyword, it feels really burdensome to learn one card. Whereas when you look at this, what's reach? I need to remember what that keyword is. Oh yeah, it can block flying. And then I just read the fucking card and I'm allowed to understand it in isolation. Um. So yeah, so that's, that's your complete answer. It's the best answer I've ever given. Um, yeah, Taunos is unfucking believable. This card is sick. This is ridiculous. It's a 3-5 that allows you to duplicate beasts and birds. Beast is pretty common. Birds a little less common. But that's, I mean, that's sick. That's like really good. Third path, Iconoclath. We got another 2-1. Oh, 2-1. Red, blue, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one colorless soldier artifact creature token. This is fucking sick. Dude, this is... Holy shit. Get in... Is it tempo? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, we're going to be tapping and stunning and having all kinds of fun. And Oh, third path, I kind of clapped. This is some good shit. You play this. It is a 2-1 by itself. At any indeterminate time in the future, you start casting stuff and you just go wide. Very nice limited card and be thrilled to pick this up. Although I need to review what the sort of instants in blue are. I don't think there's that many good blue instants and sorceries. Tokasia, Dig Sight Mentor. Oh, we're getting three color. One and some Bant. One green, white, blue. Creatures you control have Vigilance and Tap to Surveil one. All right, so it's four mana, four, three. And it's creatures you control have this. So she has Vigilance herself. Great. Um, two. Green, green, white, white, blue, blue. Exile to Cassia Dig Site and Mentor from your graveyard. Return any number of target artifact cards with total mana value 10 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Whoa. Surveil and Bant. Yeah, because I assume that like the sort of theme is that 
Um, you know, something that came up in Strixhaven is Lorehold, red and white, sort of where this combo about ancestry and history. Uh, and there is the very explicit notion of like excavating large machines and artifacts. Uh, and so white being able to inspect and like deal with the grave, but only in a very archaeological style way. I think it was a very clean way to make white's intersection with graveyard mechanics really solid and distinct from the other ones. Gray card, really solid, really interesting. If you can attack and then surveil your end step. Yeah. I mean, if you want, you'd probably surveil it. Their end step. Yeah, 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 right, yeah, 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 So you can't do the six unless you have a token. What do you have against Krug, Sean? Well, his name is Krug. What am I going to say that with, like, reverence? Oh, hello. Krug. Good to see you. No. It's, it's Krug. I mean, the name, the name begets the amount of respect it deserves. Power Stone Soldiers. Yoshin dissident. Wait. Oh, he's he's like, what is he? Oh, he's reaching for this tool to fix this thing up. I thought he was about to spank this little green monster on the butt. Yoshin dissident. Look at this green and white. Whenever an artifact enters battlefield under your control, put a plus plus counter target creature you control. Holy green. Oh my god, this is an insane grower. End of shower. Getting ready. Yeah, get on out there. Get huge. This is an amazing. A two mana 1-1 one, one, that as you start getting power stones, it rapidly spins out of control. Oh, yes. Yeah, we're into Yoshin Distant. Yoshin Tactician. Other soldiers you control get plus one, plus one. A four mana 3-4 three, that's relatively straightforward in my Brother's War set? More likely than you think. Yeah, I, I, this is just a solid card. It's an Anthemer. And it's other soldiers, not soldier tokens. So this is a soldier. Lots of creatures are soldier, soldiers. I'd give this really high ratings and limited. Blade, Coil, Serpent. Oh, is it an X cost, baby? X and six, Jesus. When Blade, Coil enters the battlefield, for each blue, blue spent to cast it, draw a card. When Blade Coil Serpent enters the battlefield for each black black spent to cast it, each opponent discards a card. When it enters the battlefield for each red red spent to cast it, it gets plus one plus oh and gains trample and haste until end of turn. So, okay. So... It doesn't matter what value X is, it's still a 5-4. And if I let X equal 0, and then spent blue, blue, black, black, red, red, I would draw a card, they'd discard a card, and it would get Trample Haste. Wow, does it apply to the 6? Oh, of course, absolutely. Wow. Jesus. Yeah, and if this is mono blue, then you just draw, 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 right? Because you spent six blue. Throw this puppy out. Or if I, I don't know, let's imagine that we're running the mono black list that I absolutely promised you we would. This comes out as a 5-4 and my opponent discards three cards. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, that's some good shit right there. Dude, even just being in black-blue. 
the X just allows you to be a complete piece of shit. So, for instance, if I had a bunch of power stones for some reason and I made X like 20, but then only six of it were in black black, or excuse me, only six of it were black, then it would still be the same as making X equals zero. But if I say had 20 swamps, I could make X equal 14. I've paid double black 10 times, so you have to discard 10 cards. By the way, some 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 of y'all in chat kill me. Um, because if you listen to the end of my point, my point was if you had a bunch of power stones where X was 20, it wouldn't do anything. And before I got to finish, some of you were going, power stones don't do anything, power stones won't help. And again, I understand the chat is a chance for you to like just talk to each other, but every once in a while, I'm just like, my dudes, my dudes. If I'm halfway through, don't guess the end. Don't guess the end. Just, just, just give me five more seconds to speak. So let's see if this was a six mana red card, like in mono red. This would be an eight four trample haster. Four is pretty weak though. But tram trample haste is fucking good. Damn, I like blade coil serpent a lot. You give them fives across the board. I really think it's going to be fun in, like, black-blue lists. Popping this puppy down. You discard two. I draw one. Mmm. Clay Champion. X and four. Clay Champion enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it for each green green spent to cast it. <gasps> when Clay Champion enters the battlefield, choose up to two other target creatures you control for each white white spent to cast Clay Champion. Put a plus one plus one counter on each of them. Huh. So if I just went green, 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 this is an 8-8 eight, eight for 4. Oh my god. A 4 mana 7-7? Seven, seven? My god, this is a 4 mana 7-7 seven, seven with a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. It's crazy. Whoa. I don't care about this. Like, and you can help your friends. No, this is a, this is an eight eight for four. Yeah, we're gonna do some real dumb shit with green and large artifacts. Mmm, mmm. Mmm, that's some good stuff. Oh yeah, Aeronauts wings, total total garbage. Or give you an Avenger six mana until end of turn. Or give you an Avenger gets minus one minus one. And gains your choice of flying, vigilance, death touch, or haste. Not bad, actually. Not bad. Because you can just be swinging in as like a 4 4 flyer for cheap. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad. Reasonable. Acceptable. Um, not even to Cityscape Leveler, an 8 mana 8 8 with trample. When you cast a spell, and whenever Cityscape Leveler attacks, destroy up to one target, non-land permanent. Its controller creates a tapped Power Stone token. Fuck yes. Holy shit, dude. It's a Meteor Golem, but actually useful once it's hit the battlefield. Oh my god, whenever you cast, whenever it attacks... Oh my god, I love this card. This is my favorite. It's an 8-8. Oh fuck. And we can make we can just make copies of this shit. Dude, Titan of Industries, you get the get out of here. Sad loser that only hits enchantments. Oh my god. Dude, I can play the Cityscape Leveler and then play the Titan of Industry to blow up the power stone they got. Oh fucking holy shit. Cityscape Leveler. Yo, dude, tomorrow is going to be fucking awesome. Oh, my God. And if it gets countered, I'm still destroying shit? Hell yeah, Baller Brawl. I love that analysis. Oh, my God. Look at the Cityscape Leveler. It's so huge. I love him. 
Oh, it sucks to live in this universe. Oh, look at this. Energy refractor. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Two, add one man of any color. No. Goblin firebomb. One for flash. Seven and tap. Sacrifice Goblin Firebomb, destroy target permanent. Okay, so this is only relevant when you have a bunch of Power Stones. Oh yeah, Power Stones make colored mana. Yeah, this is this is cute. It's cute, but I, no, not a chance. Levitating Statue. Two, flying. Whenever you cast non-creature spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on Levitating Statue. You can pay a little bit, it becomes a 1-1 construct artifact creature until the end of turn, but not longer. Not much longer than that. Good good finisher in is it tempo stuff. Play this early, cast a bunch of spells that delay, and then this thing gets really big and you start swonking in. Yeah, yeah, I can see this in is it tempo. It seems like a very solid card. Liberator, Urza's Battle Thopter. Oh, it's the card that's floating behind me. This card looks ridiculous. This head just, it doesn't need to be here. A three mana flash flyer. You may cast colorless spells and artifact spells as though they had flash. Ooh, whenever you cast a spell, if the amount of mana spent to cast that spell is greater than the than Liberator Urza's Battle Thopter's power, Make it bigger. So basically, Liberator Urza's Battle Thopter is like... It's like a, like a mentor card. Kinda. And it's whenever you cast a spell. I mean, the card's insane. It's so good. Urza's Battle Thopter rules. It's just shooting out villains out of its belly button. I can't tell if it's getting shot or if it's shooting. This thing's rad. Oh, he's scratching? Okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd give this insanely high ratings and limited. Flash Flyer that just keeps growing and growing and growing. Jesus, that's out of control. And you can occasionally get a combat trick out of it. <laughs> You know, like play Liberator, it's a 1-2, cast something for 2 mana, immediately it's a 2-3. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pricey. But this, this yeah, this is a very, very, very good card. It's certainly a 5 in limited. I don't think it sucks in constructed. Mind Worker, you gain a life. If you control creatures, or control creatures named Power Plant Worker and Tower Worker, you gain 3 life instead. Where are my other workers at? Okay, so wait, wait. Power plant worker. It gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. If you control a uh, creature's name, minor worker, put two plus and plus counters on power plant worker instead. Okay, and then there's tower worker. Reach, add that. If you control this other thing, add all that shit instead. Oh my god, it's like awful Tron. It's like Tron, but garbage. Oh, I'm going to run this stuff, man. I love things in threes. Love it. Portal to Phyrexia. A nine mana artifact. When Portal to Phyrexia enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices three creatures. At the beginning of your upkeep, pull, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It's Phyrexian in addition to its other types. Oh, dude. Ah, we're running this shit. Oh. Oh, we're running this shit in Constructed. It's going to be such a fucking great day tomorrow oh my god it's not legendary oh yes portal of phyrexia mm-hmm
That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, God. Yes. Oh, Frexy is my favorite plane. Oh, my God. I get a portal to there. Oh, oh my God. Yes. Oh, yeah. You're, you're garbage. Reconstructed Thopter. <laughs> a Slagstone Refinery. Whenever Slagstone Refinery or another non-token artifact you control is put in the graveyard from Battlefield or is put in the exile from anywhere, make a Power Stone Shard. Okay. Spectrum Sentinel. Protection from multicolored. Whenever a non-basic land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you gain one life. Is this card actually busted? Is this card, like, sick? Run this against Esper Legends, heal a bunch, just block stuff straight. They can't touch you, man. They're yoked. Protection for multicolored. It's actually pretty ridiculous. I think it's actually pretty good. I don't know if this is going to be that good in limited, but actually constructed. It seems like pretty, pretty busto. Pretty gusto busto, huh? The Stasis Coffin. That This does sound like a B-horror movie. Stasis Coffin. All right, three, two, and a tap. Exile the Stasis Coffin. You gain protection from everything until your next turn. I'm sorry, did I not say that I was going to be doing a turbo fog list? Did I not say this clearly yet? Ooh, yeah. Wow, this is even better than a stasis effect. Or a fog effect. This is this is a stasis effect. This is We are with the arbiter is casting stasis on us. Mmm. Good stuff. It is a legendary artifact, which makes sense. You don't want to have, like, a stack of these. Alright. Steel Exemplar. Five mana, four, four, trample. Steel Exemplar is battlefield with two plus and plus and counters on it, unless two or more colors of mana were spent to cast it. Interesting. Interesting, 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 interesting. So, like, if you are a monocolored list, it's a 6-6 six, six for 5. So maybe monocolor will actually be legit. Because you can go monocolor with a bunch of artifacts. Hmm. <laughs> uh, okay. Is colorless a color? No, colorless is not a color. Which, in Magic, that is a very reasonable question to ask. Outside of magic, you would sound like someone that has never understood what words mean. <laughs> Is a Granny Smith apple a kind of apple? The Stone Brain, two mana. Exile Stone Brain, choose a card name. Search chart, opponent's graveyard hand library for up to four cards with that name. And exile them. The player shuffles, then draws a card for each card exiled from their hand this way. Oh my god. Okay. This is soon to be the most frequently run, terrible to frequently run card of all time. <sighs> okay. So let's read this. So the idea is let's say I am a list. Let's say here here's a simple example. I'm running a list that has four copies of a spell that lets me take extra turns. And the way I win is I take infinitely many turns and just peck away for one damage with a flyer until I eventually win. So the threat is not the one damage flyer. The threat is the infinite turns. So I would play the Stone Brain, and then I would tap it, and I would name this extra turn spell. I'd look at their graveyard, their hand, their library, and then I would exile all of those. And then the game would continue. There have been many effects like this that have existed before. And the problem is, this is one of the most anti-useful cards ever. Okay? Ever. Because let's imagine your opponent 
let's say has pretty much all bad creatures and one killer creature in their list. And they run four copies of this killer creature. So I want you to imagine what I'm doing. I play this card on turn two. They play a creature on turn two. On turn three, I tap this, exiling it and exiling all the good creatures. And they play something on turn three. Now it's turn four and I've done nothing to impact the board. And I am guaranteed below on card advantage because I lost a card to delete things that was in their hand and deck. And if they exiled a card from their hand, they get to redraw it. So they will never uh, do anything except gain card, adva card advantage when I play the Stone Brain. So the Stone Brain is, if your opponent has like two cards that can win the game for them, or as in like four copies of two different cards, don't run Stone Brain. If there's like one card that if you pick that off, you instantly win, then you are allowed to run Stone Brain. So for instance, if Teferi turns into this win condition card in blue control lists, Stone Brain is good there. And it's not good anywhere else. This is gonna be a card that people are going to misrun a lot. I mean, at least some of the other cards was like one black green, excuse me, one black blue. And you just cast once and it would be done. Right, but this is like delete two whole turns. Can you name lands? Sure, you can name lands, but you can only get rid of four cards with that name. Stone retrieval unit four man. I was stone retrieval unit. It was battlefield. Just make a power stone. Isn't that cool? Mm -mm. No, it isn't. Suchi cave guard eight mana eight eight with vigilance and ward four. When Suchi Cave Guard dies, add eight, eight rhombuses. Until end of turn, you don't lose this mana. Steps and phases end. Jesus. I mean, that's pretty. That's pretty insane. There's just some like really good pricey things. Oh, supply drop. Flash the splatter on his battlefield. Target creature you control gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. And you can sack it to draw a card. Oh, that is wild. So it's like a combat trick that replaces itself, but way down the line. But there's a lot of combat tricks that just do something good and immediately redraw. This card is nuts with Drafna. I, I, think, I think Darfna would be really good with Supply Drop. It's actually pretty acceptable and limited. Swift Gear Drake, Flying Haste 2 4. When it enters the battlefield, put up to one target card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. I, I'm not evaluating this card. This is a ridiculous card. Symmetry Matrix for four. Whenever a creature with power equal to its toughness enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one. If you do, draw a card. Whoa! I mean, there's a lot of things that activate the Symmetry Matrix. Super duper duper ultra crazy slow. Pay four to do nothing, and then you have to wait to cast a creature, and then you get to pay, and then you get to draw. But, I mean, that's that's pretty good. Four, four is a lot. Four is quite a lot. Like, Jota's Codex in the last set was even a little bit too much. Oh, yeah, Commander God Tier card. Oh, Commander! Yeah, this, this does some good shit. Three-hand power suit for two. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each aura and equipment attached to it and has ward two. I think this is pretty good. Because, like, look, dude, in limited, ward two is a obnoxious keyword to deal with. Put this on a solid defender or a solid flyer, and, like, dude, it's just hard to deal with. It's just hard to remove. Uh, equip 2 is pretty pricey. And it also is plus one, plus one for each aura and equipment attached to it. I think, I think I'd give this like a 2 in limited. 2 or 3. Seems seems relatively solid, but I still think it like it needs more upside. 
Thran Spida, a rare. Three mana, two, four with reach. When it enters the battlefield, you and target opponent each create a tapped power stone. With the top four cards of your library, you may reveal an artifact and put it into your hand. Wow. I mean, Jesus. This power stone shit is pretty... It's pretty good. <laughs> two, four for three with reach. Great defensive stat line. Really, really cool action shot. Like, you really feel the action with the blurring of the foreground and, like, the kicking up of dirt in here. I mean, that's really nice. This is an incredible illustration. Jeez. You say it's expensive. Well, th this can be cast with power stones or activated with power stones. So, really, I feel like it's more like a five cost. Tower Worker, Frexian Dragon Engine. What? It's three mana, two, two, double strike when Frexian Dragon Engine enters battlefield from your graveyard. You may discard your hand if you do draw three cards. Melds with Nishra claimed by Gix. What? So literally the uh double str like this this card is super great in red aggro. Super great. Nishra claimed by Gix. What the fuck? What the fuck is happening here? Did Ed, did you put Yu-Gi-Oh cards in this review? Like what is this? So here's what I am gleaming. The Phyrexian Dragon Engine is a card that has this on the front. Mishra Claimed by Gix is a card that has this on the front. And on the back of Mishra is this image. And on the back of Phyrexian Dragon e Engine is this image. So you flip them both over to make a whole new big card. And now, we're, now they're melded. Jesus. All right. Whenever you attack... Okay, so this is Mishra. It's 3-5 for 4. It seems good. Whenever you attack, each opponent loses X life, and you gain X life, where X is the number of attacking creatures. If Mishra claimed by Gex and a creature named Phyrexian Dragon Engine are attacking, and you both own and control them, exile them, then meld them into Mishra lost to Phyrexia. It enters the battlefield tapped and attacking. So so if I have this fucking shitter dragon engine and this mediocre Cheeto eating <laughs> soon to be Phyrexian Lord comes out and they they melded together. Mishra lost to Phyrexia. Whenever Mishra Lost enters the battlefield or attacks, choose three. Target opponent discards two cards. Deals three damage to any target. Destroy target artifact or planeswalker. Creatures you control gain menace and trample. Creatures you don't control get minus one, minus one until end of turn. Oh, and he creates two tapped power stones. Holy shit. What's the mana value of this? Is it seven? I assume zero. I assume it's combined, actually. Pretty sure it's the combined. So it is It is a seven cost. Damn. Well, I feel like now that that had all that drama and buildup, I have to say this is a zero. Like, when the fuck is this ever going to happen? When are you going to do this? What's the matter with you? You know what? I shouldn't say this. I'm someone who's been buying Powerball tickets, right? Because it was two billion, and I think I would wear two billion well. But, like... I wasn't going to win it, and I scanned it, and it just goes, not a winner. It's very anticlimactic. If you put these two cards into your deck, I will show you the exact same image on my Powerball, which said, not a winner, and that's it. Like, that's what I feel like you deserve. So, I think Mishra Lost Frexia is going to be a zero. We will be building a deck around Mishra tomorrow. Um, 
just to be clear, this attacks, and if Phyrexian Dragon Engine is also attacking, it becomes this. So that means the enters the battlefield. Prox, it is attacking, and yet the attacks trigger does not proc because you attack. And once you attack, you are now attacking. So if it enters the battlefield attacking, it is not attacked. It's already past that. So yeah, this card seems like garbage. All right. Urza, Lord Protector. Oh, he's sitting there holding his bowl. One. Um. Yeah, it's ETB or attacking. So the ETB triggers, but the attacking doesn't. So it doesn't trigger twice is what I'm saying. So Urza Lord Protector. One and a white and a blue. Artifact and sorcery spells you cast. Cost one less to cast. That's fucking insane. Seven. If you both own and control Urza Lord Protector and an artifact named the Might Stone and Weak Stone, exile them and meld them into Urza Planeswalker. Activate only as a sorcery. Do the Might Stone and Weak Stone, weren't these like fucking garbage ancient cards? Right? Isn't Weak Stone like all attacking creatures get minus one, minus O, oh, and Might Stone is all attacking creatures get plus one, plus O? Oh? Wow. Whoa. They may, this may as well be just like two pogs, right? And that's what caused the fucking Brothers War. Lost the Dances and Lore, they're incredibly powerful. Oh, I bet. Were they, were they, did they also come with cool slammers? All right, the Might Stone and the Weak Stone. Um, for five mana, when the Might Stone and the Weak Stone enters the battlefield, choose one. You can draw two cards, or you have the most expensive Dismember of all time. It costs five times as much as Dismember does. Well, so Day 9 said Urza literally, literally replaced his eyes with them. They are pogs. Can you imagine some fucking kiddo ripping his eyes out and putting in two fucking cardboard pogs? That's Urza. That's that's astounding. Oh, Master Mice is not even close. My son is powerful. Uh, no, no, I, I I think I think I'm completely right. Hold on, let me look up the Gatherer. All right, because I said one is what they're weaker when attacking. Yeah. All right, ten creatures. Yeah, yeah, so I was right. Okay, so there's the weak stone. Weak stone. All attacking creatures lose minus one, minus oh. Creatures with power less than one deal no damage. All right, I'm fucking killing the game. Let's look at the other one. Might stone. Oh, I'm fucking, I'm killing the game. Look, all attacking creatures get plus one, plus oh. Yeah, dude, th these, these fucking garbage things, man. Dude, I'm sick. I'm sick. Might stun and weak stun. More like the bad stun and the bad stun. And Master Mike, I like how you said not even close when I was exactly correct. I'm fucking sick, dude. That's amazing. It's not even, well, I disagree. I'm a little bit closer than you anticipated. It's that you said I was not even close. Like, not even like a little bit. Like, this may as well have been a type of pasta that I confused with a magic card. Like, it was not even close. But it was exactly correct. I'm fucking killing the game here, man. I give me a 6 out of 5, but only in limited. Um, yeah, well, you, you have the, I think you're confusing the Might Stone and the Weak Stone with, with the Meek Stone and the Flight Stone or whatever. Master Mike says it was the Meek Stone. Here's my penance. Oh, your penance. Not even close. You don't even owe me anything, Master Mike. We're always happy to have you, and I'm sorry I had to give you a little bit of grief because it's so rare that I'm right. Can we actually agree on that? It's so rare that I'm, like, fucking correct. Like, that's so rare. I miss most of the detail on the cards that are in front of me as I play them, okay? And I just slurped that into my brain from the past just to dunk on Urza, and I was right. I mean, let me celebrate a little bit here, man. All right. The Might Stone and the Weak Stone. Yeah. Someone write this down. This is a big moment. I'm going to make this into an NFT. So, um, this man can't be spent to cast on artifacts. Okay. So, Might Stone and Weak Stone is weak. Oh. 
Urza, Lord and Protector, is is actually pretty good. Like a 2-4 for 3 that reduces costs. Some good shit. All right. Urza, Planeswalker. With 7 loyalty. And look at that. His eyes are pogs. Once during each of your turns, you may activate an additional loyalty ability of Urza Planeswalker. Okay, plus two. Artifact incident sorcery spells you cast this turn cost two less to cast. You gain two life. Plus one, draw two cards, then discard a card. All right, create two colorless soldier artifact creature tokens. Minus three. Exile target non-land permanent. And 10, Artifacts and Planeswalkers you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Destroy all non-land permanents. His minus 10 is actually pretty bad. It's minus 10 for like a sweeper. Like, get out of here. So just keep in mind, you can use his abilities twice. Yeah, you can minus 10 and then minus 10. And just like, oh, fuck, I swept it real. I really cleaned up good. Um... This guy plays Pogs. He still collects them. And he's actually... He's not even collecting them because of the nostalgia and because he appreciates it. He collects them because he thinks the value later is going to go up. Like, Urza is a negative 5 out of 5. I cannot imagine a, a more disappointing climax of a human being that jams two Pogs into his eyes and then only minus 10s to Sweeper? I mean, get out of here. Please, I'd rather have Karn Silex back in my deck. Oh my goodness. I will create four 1-1 one, one colorless soldier creature tokens. Like, there's a card for six that just does that. Like, you didn't have to, like, meld and rip out your eyes, bro. I could, I can't even believe this. Like, plus two, plus two, to make the artifacts, incense, and sorceries cost two less? That's the ultimate. That's the ultimate right there. That's the ultimate. We'll absolutely be building an Urza deck tomorrow. Like 100%. We're building an Urza deck. Oh, this, God, this fucking card is so bad. And it's legendary. I can't even... Ugh, get out of here. All right. Titania, Voice of Gaia. She's green. She's mythic. She gets a 5 out of 5 from me. One green, green. Legendary creature elemental for a 3-4 with reach. Very nice. Whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, you gain two life. Yes! Fuck yeah. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are four or more land cards in your graveyard and you both own and control Titania, Voice of Gaia, and a land named Argoth, Sanctum of Nature, exile them, then meld them into Titania, Gaia, Incarnate. We're fucking doing this shit. Get your slammers out, baby. We're playing with an ante. Does anyone fucking play Pogs? Did any of you play Pogs? Like, am I talking to myself here? I haven't seen anyone even go, ha ha, Pogs. Like, no one's saying anything about Pogs. And I'm, like, making a really big point to bring up Pogs multiple times. And people are like, uh, Poggers? And I'm like, oh, I want to be dead. All right, Argoth, Sanctum of Nature. Is there any battlefield? Tap unless you control a legendary green creature. Oh, look, add green. Oh, shit, look at this. Create a 2-2 green bear creature token. Activate only as a sorcery. Fuck, man, this is my shit right here. Oh my god, it's a green land deck? Where my land merges to make Titania Gaia incarnate? Holy shit, she looks exactly like someone that woke up and hasn't had their coffee yet. Like, you can just see her, like, getting out of bed. Like, what the fuck is my phone alarm going off for? Holy shit, look at her. She just, oh, she woke up one second ago. Like, she left her phone on the other side of the room, and now it's going off, and she has to fucking get out of bed for it. Oh, my God, I feel terrible for Titania. All right. Vigilance, Reach, Trample, Haste. Titania, Guy Incarnate's Power. Wait, hold on, I gotta go back here, because the transformation was on this. At the beginning of your upkeep, there are four more land cards in your graveyard. That's it? So I like Titania. I, 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 I can play this on one. I, I can, like, mill on two. I can play Titania on three. 
And then, this is at the beginning of your upkeep. Damn. So I can actually, like, cast on untap before upkeep? No, I don't think there's a, there's a slot in there. Shit, I'm brewing in my brain. I'm brain brewing right now. Fuck yeah. So we, we can't quite activate this on turn four because this is at the beginning of your upkeep and this is really important because you go untap and then you immediately hit upkeep. So there's not like like with um, attacking and blocking, there's like attack and then you can do a thing and I can do a thing. And then there's like block and you can do a thing and I can do a thing. My understanding of untap, upkeep, draw is that there's just... There's not these sort of in-between phases. Like, I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you would think that you go untap and then you need to wait and you have a chance to do things and then it's upkeep and then you get to do things, and then it's draw, and then you get to do things. But I believe that that, the, 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 that sequence, like untap into upkeep, I think that you can't hold priority and then go to the next thing. I think it just instantly goes in there. I think there's just no no ability to like stop and like I un I, I untapped and now I get like a beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's it's like the only phase pairing in the game where there's not a beat where you get to, to pass to the next one. So I think it's like untap up key. And then you can wait, and there's a beat, and you can do stuff, and then draw can happen. And then there's a beat, and you can do stuff, and then there's main. And there's a beat, and you can do stuff, and there's pre-combat. So yeah. Yeah, so, so I think that you, we can never get this to go off on turn four. Anyways, anyways. But yeah, like, we're going to build this shit. So anyways, well, what does this card even do? Vigilance, Reach. Yeah, Lost the Day and I know. I'm glad you brought it up because, like, I think it's one of those really weird fiddly rule things. And I was only half sure. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad that you brought it up because then I brought it up and then a whole bunch of correct people gave us the answer. So great. Vigilance, Reach, Trample, Haste. Titania, guys, current power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control. Oh, Fuck yes. When Titania enters the battlefield, return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Put four plus one plus one counters on target land you control. Becomes zero zero elemental creature with haste. It's still a land. This is the best card that I have ever seen. Holy shit. I can't wait to get to, to play this coffee deprived, exhausted, recently awoken Titania Gaia Incarnate. All right, Battlefield Forge. Oh, look, Pain Lands. Blast Zone. Yeah, welcome back, Blast Zone. Get in our control decks. Come on in. Oh, yes. Brush Land, Pain Land, Demolition Field. Sack Demolition Field. Destroy target non basic land opponent controls. Not Field of Ruin. That land's controller may search their library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield and shuffle. You may search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield and shuffle. What? Why is it not feel I mean literally this is the same card as Field of Ruin. What am I not understanding? What am I not understanding? What what don't I get? I'm dumb. Tell me how. Field of Ruin gives a land to all opponents. 
Oh, 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 that's fucking funny, man. All right, evolving wilds. All right, you do your stuff. Fortified beachhead. As it enters the battlefield, you may reveal a soldier card from your hand. Enters the battlefield, tap unless you reveal a soldier card. Whoa, what is this weird fucking what? Holy shit. Whoa. 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 Okay, so this is like a weird aggro Azorius combo land that can make make those soldiers bigger. Hall of Tag Sin. You ever played tag but without your piety? Yeah, a little bit of Hall of Tag Sin. All right, add some colorless. Add one man of any color. Create a tapped Power Stone token. Fucking L O L, man. All right, little fixing, little power stone pumping. Mmm, this card's car garbage. Lanawar Wastes. Great name for what this land is. Mishra's Foundry. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. Colorless. Mishra's Foundry becomes 2 2 assembly worker artifact creature until end of turn. It's still a land. Target attacking assembly worker gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. All right, all right. So if I have like several Mishra's Foundries, they really pump up the worker. Foundry deck. Foundry decks, great. Eh, it's gonna go great in my mono green Tron list. Oh, it's gonna be so fucking sick. Tokasia's Dig Site. Pay three to surveil one. Very cool card. Really, really like this design. Oh, I adore this. Oh. Is Foundry the only slap land? I think you're right. Mm. Underground River deals pain because there's scorpions. Plains. Oh, I love that one. Oh, God, that looks so good. Oh, my God, that looks so good. Yo, that's fucking sick. That's quite cool. All right. Oh, nice little structures on there. Ooh. Mm. Oh, dude. No longer are there prisms. Oh wait, what, what were the prisms called in Magic? Magic um, in Magic Legends, those, those little simplex shapes. Oh yeah, hedrons. Oh my god, I let me just hearing the word just immediately that makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up with arousal. Oh, I love it. But hedrons, get out of the way. We got we got koosh balls. We got spiky koosh balls. Holy shit. I need to play Elden Ring, don't I? Oh my god. Oh my god. Jesus. Oh. <laughs> He's sliding into your DMs. Oh, look at this guy. God. Oh. Holy shit. I don't know what's going on here. This guy's like not into war. He's actually just into just seeing what's going on in the sewers. Oh, that's so fucking cool. Oh, fuck. Oh my god, look at him. Oh, hey, sorry I'm late. Do you have a coat rack anywhere that I can hang this shield on? Oh, my God. Fuck, I am going to buy these the second that I can. Jesus. Looks like you're... Yeah, it's me from Elden Ring. 
Oh my God, I've never timed anything more perfect in my life. We are done. That was a blast. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me for another successful card review. I am incredibly surprised that I was able to maintain a consistent amount of energy throughout the entire stream. Probably because I slept a whole bunch last night. Planning to do the same tomorrow. That's how it's done. Lost the day nine, gifted us five subs. Lost the day nine. You get the final call. You get the final call. Did I review the cards that go into historic? I'm not going to review that because I don't play that garbage format. I'm all about standard, baby. Everything that I don't do is garbage. Oh, yes. Uh, so, yeah, tomorrow I'm going to be playing in the pre-release starting at 1 p.m. Pacific. Friday we're going to be doing more Marvel Snap as I grind my way up to um, Pool 3. God, I'm having a lot of fun with that game, too. Mm -mm 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 -mm.